Just three short days ago, our team had an opportunity to explore the Sentosa Island. We're going to enjoy a nice long walk on the beach, took some great pictures, even had a chance to do the indoor skydiving, which was awesome. But it wasn't until we got home that we realized that all the other amenities, services, and attractions that the park had to offer. Like the Sentosa Cineblast, which would have been a great addition to our day to cap off a very hot afternoon. My name is Zach Westack, alongside my colleagues Ben Bull and Wendy Wu, and together we're here today to help you as the board of directors and other leaders of Sentosa understand how to improve the guest experience to drive profitable growth and achieve these strategic business objectives that you have outlined. So, as, uh, as our business leaders have mentioned, our key objectives in the six month period is to drive our membership loyalty program to the next level. We want to double the membership um, from 94,000 to 182,000 just in that six month period, and also cut down on attrition by 50%. In the 18 month time frame, we want to make sure that we're improving the guest experience to be more interactive and engaging for our guests, which is going to make it more personal. And once it's more personal, we can make sure that we're actually improving our guest experience and driving revenue um, to increase revenue for guests per visit. And thinking long term, we want to make sure that our IT solutions are scalable and can support and drive business growth. Not only so that we're providing value for our guests, for our business, but for all of our stakeholders. So before we can answer some of those questions about how to address these uh, key business objectives, we had to take a step back and really understand where are the pain points for our guests. We have to ask the question, what's preventing it Sentosa from providing the best possible guest experience? And our guests at Sentosa value maximizing their time and navigating to the park efficiently. So our three solutions are centered around what our guests value, and that's that time and efficiency around the park. So our redesign of the Islander um, Benefits Program is going to put more emphasis on time, and in the long term, we're going to make our IT investments to make sure that this growth does happen. So, as I mentioned before, we want to shift the emphasis of cost savings to time savings. We know that one out of every five Singapore residents works an average of, of more than 11 hours per day, which is twice the global average. And as a result of that, they don't have a whole lot of free time. So we want to maximize their time spent in the park. And we're going to do this through our Islander Fast Pass, which is an express queue offered exclusively only for our um, loyalty member card holders. And also an Islander Express uh, buggy transport, so that between rides, we can take them from transportation, or uh, attraction A to attraction B. So they're getting more out of their time spent in the park and spending more money. And now that we've covered an overview of our six-month initiative, let's learn more about what we can do for a long term. So we know Singapore has the highest smartphone penetration in the world. Research showed that about 90% of Singaporeans use smartphones. We need to use, we can, uh, this gives us a big opportunity to utilize the mobile app to engage our guests. So within the next 18 months, we want to build upon the existing My Sentosa mobile app and add payment, uh, payment function. With that, we can collect data such as customer's age and gender, as well as contact data such as the date of visit and the attractions we went. With this information, we'll be able to use data analytics to uh, offer features such as uh, in-park navigation and real-time personalized promotions. And next, we'll demonstrate to you how the per, uh, data analytics is going to work, both on the back end and the customer end. So on the back end, this is a snapshot of um, an example of uh, data we'll be collecting. To be simple, we're only uh, uh, looking at attributes such as age, gender, as well as attractions that they visit. We use data mining tool Excel Miner to discover two rules that will help us to gain some business insight. So the first rule looks at the correlation between the attractions that guests went. It tells us if a guest visit iFly Singapore, we are confident that they will also visit Central City Plus. So the next rule helps us to predict 
uh, guest, in, guest behaviors and preference based on their demographic information. So if a guest is under 22 years old, we are very confident that he will be interested in going to iFly Singapore as well. So how is this going to deliver value to our customers? Let's go back to our opening story. So we just had a blast at the indoor skydiving, and then we got a uh, push-up notification on our phone that leads us to the, C the Sentosa Cineblast. And we had so much fun there, and Sentosa also made more money out of us. And this is a win-win business scenario that we want to realize from uh, our solutions. So next, we want to talk about the strategies that will help us sustain business growth and sustain uh, customer benefits in the long term. And also look at how should we invest in IT to drive business value. So on average, companies today spend up to 70% of their money on IT to run day-to-day -day operations and just to keep the lights on. Insufficient investment is dedicated to uh, grow and transform business. At Sentosa, we have two main <coughs> systems, the CRM system and the technical system. While they both run, function well um, on their own, the lack of integrations prevent us from gaining a further understanding of our guests on a personal level. So we want to break the system silos by using the extent and the grace uh, embrace IT approach uh, to integrate those data. We will still feed the customer reference data from the current CRM application to their database. However, we will um, feed the context data that collected from the mobile app and feed them into the ticketing system, which will allow us to reference these context information to the CRM database. With these data, with these data that we collect, uh, we'll be able to uh, use analytics that help us to, put, to uh, provide a personalized experience for our guests through the mobile app. We believe this will give us the IT capability that's better <coughs> aligned with our business strategy and in the long term will help us, will provide a solid foundation for us to use mobility and analytics. So next we'll talk about how do we transition to the future state. First area we consider during our trend. The first thing we considered during our transition and key feasibility studies was the risk plan. Now, when considering a product of this size and complexity, there will always be risks to consider. But it's not those risks necessarily that are the most important thing to think about. What's really important is how are you going to overcome those risks and how are you going to mitigate those risks. For example, a potential risk we foresee. Is the Islander Express buggies being too packed or too busy during the peak hours? To overcome that, we're going to prototype this offer for a few weeks before it actually launches. In addition to this, we're also going to work with the data, data analytics tools that Winnie spoke of earlier to figure out exactly when Island Express members are going from attraction A to attraction B and how we can make that process as efficient as possible. The next area we looked at was our implementation time. Now while there is a lot going on in the near-term future, we'd like to make it clear that there are two separate projects going on simultaneously, so it's much more manageable than you might think. Looking at the short-term project on top, we're going to redefine and recreate the, the Islander program starting July 1st. That's when we plan on launching that new program. That'll give us six full months to get through our new numbers of doubling the membership and having the, the attrition. At the same time, we're going to be working towards developing a new mobile application functionality and launching Wi-Fi throughout the park. It's also very important to notice that we're doing a multiple stage application launch. So the first stage will launch January 1st, version 1.0. While we hope this includes the majority of the functionality, such as GPS-enabled navigation and real-time line queues, we realize that it's a lot to get done in seven and a half months, so some of it will be put off to later on. So we're going to give ourselves a few months to test it, to iterate it, and really build upon those initial features. Hopefully launch a fully functional version 2.0 app by the end of 2014. It's also very important to note that on the bottom you'll see change management happening throughout this whole process. When considering a project this size, 
We have to look at change management both the IT side and the business side of the operations. Also, it's very important to know that it's not just our internal stakeholders that need to be prepared for change, but also our external stakeholders like our vendors and partners. So to prepare for this transition, we've adopted John Cotter's eight-step approach to change management, which starts with establishing a sense of urgency among all stakeholders, internal and outside. Once we have these stakeholders very excited about what's going to be happening, we have to create a shared vision among all these stakeholders. So everyone should be on the same page and excited about what's to come six months from now, one year from now, or three years from now. With this shared message, it will make the transition much more seamless and the training more possible. Now finally, we want to make sure this project is financially feasible as well. As you can see, there's quite a lot going on here, so we're not going to bore you with all the details. But if you have specific, excuse me, specific questions, feel free to ask them right here. But right now, we'll give you a high-level approach of how we approach the financial model. So starting with the top line, how are we going to create incremental benefit? It's going to come from three main areas. Increase Islander membership, Increasing the retention rate of those members, and finally increasing the revenue per guest per visit. Moving down to the incremental cost, you have to look at all sorts of initial costs as well as continual costs throughout the program. But for a quick example, to implement the buggy system we discussed earlier, the Islander Express, we're looking to buy roughly 20 new six seat buggies and, and employ an additional 25 operators to run those. Now finally, what really matters, of course, is the bottom line. As you'll see here, over the two-year analysis, we'll have roughly a six million MPV and a very high IRR. Finally, we want to ensure that even if some of our variables were a little bit off, that the project would still be financially feasible. So what we did was we looked at the two most, uh, the two most important variables, the increased revenue per visitor and the app adaption, map them on two axes to ensure that no matter what the level or the range of these numbers was, this project would still be successful, as you can see through all the green it is. At this point, we'd love to answer any questions you have. So the way we're going to do that in six months is provide those additional uh, benefits that our guests value, which is transportation around the park and also um, a more personalized experience once they are in the park. So once we provide more um, personalized push notifications and um, offers to them, we're going to engage them that way so that they're actually redeeming those benefits for areas that they're interested in. That well, the subscription, we want to incentivize uh, signups um, just based off the uh, loyalty program. So if a guest goes into the park and sees that other people are getting into this express queue line and getting out of the rides quicker, that's going to incentivize them to, to sign up for the membership as well. And then also, once they're in the park, you know, they don't want to walk a half hour across the park. They want to make sure that they're getting to the places they need to go. Um, so that's where the buggy system comes in, and that's just an exclusive benefit for members. Um, so between express queue lines and the buggy system, um, that's going to be the starting point for how we're going to increase the budget. Did I see the slides in the budget? The cost. The cost. Now, my, my question is, of course, the numbers very high. Okay, so you got 20 buggies, then, and about 25 drivers cost this much. And so, how much more membership revenue you need to cover this, or you know, make money out of that? But then, with so many members extra, how are we going to cover this cost right? and share that 20 buggies? You know, this is, I'm not sure how the numbers are tied together. Sure. Uh, we're looking at the short term approach alone. The Islander Express, as well as the Line Cube operations, we expect the payback from that to begin roughly in three months. And as far as scaling the operation, when we ran the numbers, there's something along the lines of currently 500 Island, Islander members come every day right now. Now that number will of course increase over time, and we're hoping to be in thousands every day. But when you look at uh, 20 buggies operating simultaneously, the vast majority of time of the uh, the vast majority of the time these Islander members are spending is not trying to transport around. 
reassume they're spending roughly 75% of their time at the actual attractions where they want to be, and the remaining 25% of the time, we think this number of buggies, this number of operators would be more than sufficient to transport them around. Um, thanks a lot. Yeah. Uh, I, I believe it's very comprehensive. Um, the question I have though is, I understand the motivation and the benefits for, for the user or the, the customer. Um, how do I get to know about this? Because I think it covers both residents of Singapore as well as foreigners. So what is your marketing strategy? Are there any thoughts about this? Have you included this in your proposal? So our short term, the six month goal is to specifically targeting at the local people because we know they're busy, they don't have, they don't want to spend a whole day at Setosa to just ride one attraction, to just go to one attraction, so that the uh, benefits are, uh, those loyalty benefits are focused on time saving, so that's more tailored to the local, uh, local residents. However, our long-term goal to provide a personalized experience and then whoever, you don't have to be a member to use a mobile app, and once you log into the mobile app, you can put some basic customer information. And with that information, we'll be able to personalize experience for all uh, visitors. I saw your mock up that you had, um, and you said I thought, as an example, attraction that would be part of the, um, I guess, your offer program. So how are you going to incentivize uh, I guess our partner uh, vendors to actually want to participate in this program uh, when they can just do it themselves as well? Sure, that's a great question. And we, we're going to address that issue in the change management of it. As Ben had mentioned earlier, a big piece of it is not just engaging um, the, our internal staff on the management, but also you know, making our vendors aware that you know, this change is going gonna, is gonna to help benefit them as well. Because if we're providing um, more traffic to that attraction, you know, they're going to have more revenues themselves. So it's a win-win situation for both of us, knowing that um, when we send out notifications, you know, if they're not part of that, they're not, our guests are going to only see the guests, the vendors that are part of that. Um, because a lot of guests walk into the park and aren't aware of all the attractions. But if we can figure out, uh, based on demographics and other uh, purchases in the park, We'll know exactly where they might go next based on our free analytics uh, software that we have. Um, so to answer your question I, uh, briefly, it, it really is about just increasing more traffic. Um, so I guess that's the main starting point where I'm going to incentivize our members. No, in your solution, uh, we are collecting the customer data a bit only through mobile. Where are you collecting the data about the rest of the customers <coughs> to improve the quality of CRM? So, um, my understanding of your question is where are we collecting data for the non-Islander customers? Islander, you have the data already. Yeah. That's only 19,000 people. What about the rest of the customer to improve the experience and improve the personalized attention? So the most of the uh, guests, when they come visit the park, when they use the mobile app, we will pop up uh, a login kind of uh, window that asks them for to fill out their basic information, such as birthdays, uh, gender, and also they can link to their uh, social media app that will allow us to get more information. But of course, it's an opt-in option. They can choose not to give us information. So we will only use analytics on the existing, uh, on the information that we can collect to provide them with a personalized experience. However, um, if you don't want to dispose your information, uh, the, the personalized promotions will be based on like the population of the attractions uh, that we show as an example, and that's based on all customers' uh, attractions. It's not customer specific. At the very bottom of your financial analysis, it says payback period two months, 2.02 months. That seems fast. So this also goes on the long of why the IR was so high. Are you looking at this? 
because there's very little initial cost, as you can see, it's roughly three hundred thousand dollars, and that's really just the final, the first six month program. Those cash flows then that we're getting those incremental benefits after two months of the increased membership are then used to funnel the growth from the expenses of the development of the mobile application. So really, the upfront costs are very low, and the money comes right back around in two months, and that's why you expect. Thank you, Team Paradigm, for the presentation. Before we begin, could you identify yourselves individually to the judges? Uh, your individual names. Oh, uh, Zach Blackstar. Benjamin Hall. Wendy Liu. All right, your time begins now. Our first line of order is making sure that we can generate a list of guests that have, have had potential to come to uh, human interaction with this guest that is, has the virus. So we know that the guests that may have this virus came into the island on the Sentosa Express. And through video surveillance, we can identify what train he came on and what exact time he came. So to get a better idea of who was on that train with him, we can, um, you know, we know a lot of the locals use their next card um, and also the EasyLink uh, card to make transactions. So we can backtrack the transactions when the camp when the card was scanned and when these tickets were purchased uh, with the Nets card. Um, and then by going back into the point of sale system for when these transactions were made, we can pick on a time frame for when these guests got onto the, the train. And once this guest got into the park, we can use that similar idea of uh, video surveillance tracking to track his behavior throughout the park. And once he was in the park, we can use that similar um, way of backtracking transactions through credit cards, uh, the Nets card, other purchases, whether it be through mobile devices as well. So we're going to work closely with our vendors and tap into the point of sale systems to make sure we can identify each customer that was in the vicinity and may have had interaction with them. And we want to focus specifically on the high traffic areas that he may have um, you know, went on this ride here at this time. Um, so at, that, at this point in time, that's our biggest line of concern. Um, and that's for tracking customers that were in the park that day. But to learn more about what we're going to do to prevent this from the future, so going forward, number one priority is going to be to make sure we have an accurate guest list every day in the future. So we're not sure if this is going to last a few days, a few weeks, or a few months. Ago. So how are we going to do this? It's going to start by, at each entrance point to the Sentosa property, there will be a, the, um, the health checkpoint where our employees will do the, the temperature scan. If they are clear to go through, at that point, they will be given a quick form of fill-out of just their name and the free contact information. In addition to that, we're going to give that every um, admitted customer a $0 balance Sentosa pay card. With that RFID technology that's already embedded in, in these cards, we'll be able to track each of these customers as they go throughout the park and at all times be able to go back to this information and know if they were ever around any um, hazardous situations. Now we realize that we're not, that the goal is not to make um, the guests uncomfortable with this, so we're going to be 100% forward and upfront with them why we're requesting this information. We're going to tell them it's all precautionary details and that we're never going to use this contact information they're giving us or anything along those natures. It's only going to be used for government and safety purposes.
So, so to ensure the change is as smooth as it can be, we have to start uh, from a senior level that we know that there's a need for communication both to the staff member in the park and also to our guests. For to our guests, uh, specific to your question, when guests come to the park, we can um, uh, spread out the brochures that basically just telling them uh, the, how, how uh, the virus would, would spread. So we basically educate the guests about the health concerns and risks that, um, that could, could happen. So this is just uh, helping them know that the risk is existing and also letting them know what we'd be doing to mitigate the risk. So guests know about all the changes in the park. And also uh, we could use social media uh, page uh, or Facebook to help the guests that are not coming into the park to know about the upcoming changes. the impression that once you're inside the park, we hope you're okay because we already checked each and every individual going in. So whether you're sitting next seat to a buggy or you're waiting in line with someone, we don't really see it. So just educating the guests maybe they can fill this up before they come to the park so it doesn't affect the way 